Hi everyone, welcome to Dharma Earth's Dose of Dharma. This is your Dose of Dharma for today. So the last previous two uh previous two talks we were talking about how to bring up humility and daily life. So today we will talk about how to bring up reverence, garabu, eh, in daily life. Hmm? So <clears throat> many people in the world they always like to say, Oh, you should respect me, you should respect me. I am so and so a person, I am so and so a person. You should respect me. No? But <clears throat> how can we understand reverence and respect eh? uh, in the point of view of Buddhism? <laughs> well, actually, yeah, to, to be able to be respected by others, one, eh, if one has done respectable things, state respectable words eh, and give respectable speeches and think and behave respectfully towards others, then it will greatly eh, bring up the deserving power to be respected by others. And when we talk about this, you know, we we're talking about the uh, from the viewpoint of a uh, cause and effect because many people want to be respected but they are doing a lot of unrespectful things <laughs> like for example if you are a if you are a teacher then if you are doing unrespectful things like you know uh in the first place you behave like a tyrant and do not respect your students then of course they will not respect you in the next so similarly for parents if we are behaving respectfully then, and we teach our kids about uh, uh, showing respect to others, then, of course, uh, there is a higher possibility that they will reciprocate. And that same behavior to us, isn't that so? Hmm? <coughs> so, in order to be respected, we have to cultivate ourselves <laughs> in terms of body, speech and mind uh, to be respectful to others first and to behave in a respectful way. Yeah, to others, then this will create the karma, uh, that the wholesome karma that that is supporting cause for others uh, to show respect to us, hmm? and not only just behaving respectfully to others. Actually, a lot of uh, wholesome and noble qualities that uh, one may develop. For example, faith. Yesterday I was talking about faith. Uh, so if one has a faith uh, in, in the Buddhist community, if one has faith in Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, and uh, they, they have also, their faith is also based on their, not only just on like maybe inherited from their parents or their family, but also through their experience of Dhamma, then that faith itself, uh, uh, Sometimes may also, uh, when the conditions are fulfilled, may also uh, cause others to have respect in you. Why? Because you are a practicing Buddhist, and if one practices the five precepts, and one has made a strong resolution in the mind to keep the five precepts for the whole life, then basically that means not lying for the whole life. You know, of course, whether you can do it or not. Uh, sometimes we may break the break the precepts uh, uh, unknowingly or <coughs> sometimes we didn't know what to do at the time uh, like that but these are precepts uh, not commandments so it's a training precepts so if you break it okay you know, it's broken broken already no problem just uh, understand why you break it and then after that uh, take up the five precepts again and we, we fight again yeah? we try to cultivate again but if you are a practicing Buddhist and people know that you will not lie, then that brings up your credibility, isn't that so? Whether it's within your uh, circle of friends, or whether it's within your circle of clients, customers, business partners, we will be a more credible person to others. And so, when we have credibility, when we are doing things and we do not lie, then people will show respect to us for that honesty, for that truth, right? Yeah. But what, how do we, what, what, why do we keep the precepts in the first place? 
is because of faith, mm. faith in the Buddha, Dhamma Sangha, faith in the practice, faith in good qualities, right? So that is why faith can also, uh, uh, if we develop faith in the Buddha, Dhamma Sangha, and also in the practice, then indirectly uh, we can, <coughs> directly or indirectly, we can also uh, uh, bring up, uh, 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 create the causes for people to uh, be respectful to us. But if we do that just for others to show respect to us, then that's missing the whole point, you know? <laughs> we should cultivate sincerely, okay, the, the quality of faith itself. And whether people show respect to us or not, we don't have too much attachment to the result, okay? Book on the causes and the results will come. If you do this with, with an alternate motive, uh, with wanting people, with an attachment for people to show respect to you, then you may find that you may practice this for a long time, but people are still not respecting you. Why? It's because we are, we are not sincere enough and that the, the thing that you are doing, uh, the, or the, the faith that you are showing, uh, has a, it's not true faith actually. Isn't that so? It's just, just, uh, some kind of a business transaction faith <laughs> or a quality transaction faith <laughs> or a result transaction faith right so that's missing the whole point if you if we if you want to develop uh faith uh, then you develop faith and people will respect you because of their faith uh that one uh, is uh we cannot control okay and it's like that uh, huh <coughs> So, I noticed uh, uh, during my trips to Sri Lanka, in, in our Sri Lanka monastic uh, community, I noticed that whenever my Sri Lankan uh, senior Mahateras, uh, so uh, very senior uh, vulnerables, when they go out, they, they, sh- they tend to have a lot of people like naturally feeling respect for them. So, I... I they con- did the contemplation on this, and then I discovered that actually it's because of what we do uh, in our daily practice. So what do we do in the daily practice that makes people want to respect us? Well, the most basic thing is that we, uh, in the Sri Lankan uh, monastic community, we respect, at least in my community, okay, or the community that I associate with, we respect the seniors a lot, and whenever before we eat our meals every day, so we pay respect to the four most senior vulnerables uh, in the sangha in the community. And whenever we go, uh, like for example, when we go when we are walking on the road, we all if our senior monk is uh, walking behind us, we always try to you know uh, step aside and let our senior go first. Let let them have the ease of uh, walking the road eh, without being blocked by others. So when we do that, when we do those things, we, we develop a kind of a, a mutual respect or a kind of a strong respect for our fellow uh, practitioners. So when we do, I find that when you do that and you cultivate that as a whole culture in a community, it's very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. So if you want uh, to, to have this kind of uh, <coughs> respect, then first uh, we learn how to respect others first and we bring up respect in our daily life and no matter whether you are facing uh, your family members or your kids or your clients or your friends, relate to them with respect and then uh, uh, make this part of your character and when it is part of your character, you can be expected that uh, people will respect you because of your behaviors, because of your speeches, because of your thinkings and your thoughts. Hmm? Like that, huh? So this is your dose of Dharma for today. I wish uh, all of us to be able to uh, practice uh, garavo, uh, reverence and respect in our daily lives, be able to bring up this quality in our in our character. And we have, and I wish all of us to be well, peaceful, and happy. And may the triple gem bless all of us to be able to attain our fruition and embark as soon as possible. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.